Okay, hi there. In this third video, we're going to take a look at gross domestic product again, but we're going to widen the scope to look at the largest countries in the world and also rank which nations are the richest and poorest using GDP per capita as a guide. And we'll also ask a very important question. How is the balance of world national output changing between advanced countries and developing emerging nations? Here's our first quiz question. Which countries have the largest economies in the world? Press the pause button and write down your choice of three countries. Uh, can you find three in the top five or perhaps five in the top ten? Based on GDP, which countries have the largest economies in the world? Have a go. Well, here's the data for 2019. Uh, this data is expressed at market exchange rates converted into US dollars. And we find the United States ahead with China second and Japan third, Germany in fourth place. The UK is now the sixth biggest economy in the world. If we express national output at today's market exchange rates and convert into US dollars, India has overtaken the UK to become the fifth biggest uh, economy in the world. The UK is just keeping ahead of France. So there we have uh, the top what uh, top 10 or 11 countries. South Korea has now broken into the top 12 countries in the world. Next question, which countries have the highest per capita GDP? The highest per capita. Now, per capita GDP measures national income per head of population. You take the measured GDP and divide it by, divide by your best estimate for the resident population. Uh, GDP per capita is one of the ways in which we try to assess differences in the standard of living between countries. Again, I'll ask this question, which countries are the richest in the world by this measure? Uh, write down, let's say, two countries and see if you can find two countries that appear in the top five richest nations. So press the pause button and press play when you want to click on. Well, here's the data for countries with the largest GDP per head in 2019, again, expressed in US dollars, Luxembourg, Qatar, uh, right up there, but Luxembourg, Switzerland, Macau, of course, especially the administrative region of China, Norway, and Ireland has a very, very high per capita income measured in US dollars. Uh, you'll notice here that the UK does not appear in this list. Uh, UK's per capita income in dollar terms was $39,507 in 2019. Uh, which countries in the world have the lowest per capita income? Let's go from high to low income per head. Again, take a moment, jot down two examples of countries you think might appear in the top uh, in terms of the rankings of the poorest countries in the world. And we find that these are the countries in 2019 with the lowest per capita income. Indeed, four of them have a per capita income of less than a thousand dollars a day. Burundi, Central African Republic, DRC, and Niger. These countries are a world away from the countries we saw in the previous slide, the likes of Norway and Switzerland and Qatar. <clears throat> These countries have a very high level of extreme poverty, and we'll come back to those aspects in future Head Start videos. Uh, it's always worth checking out the Human Development Report. I'll provide a link in the web page and the comment section of the video. The Human Development Report is a fantastic source of data on each country around the world and you can build up your own country profiles very easily using the data downloads. So we've looked at per capita incomes high and low. A really interesting question is how is the balance of world GDP changing? Is there a significant shift or change in the centre of gravity in the world economy? Well one important aspect to be aware of as you start your study of economics is the, the rise of China this chart shows the share of global GDP coming from China. And you can see there's been a steady increase over the period. The data for 2019 and 2020 is a forecast. Of course, not that may well change. But China's share of GDP has risen from just over 15% in 2012, touching 20% in 19, 2019 and uh, 2020. And if we look at regions of the world economy, this is the share of global GDP uh, as a percentage. Well, the crucial thing here is that there's been a big shift in output and investment towards what we call faster growing emerging market and developing countries. Indeed, according to this chart, 
which is taken from the IMF, <clears throat> emerging market and developing countries now account for 60% of world output. The first two columns in this chart should add up to uh, 100%. Emerging market, developing countries compared with advanced high income countries, including the UK. And then we're splitting the chart up to look at some other regions. Uh, what we notice is there's been a big shift towards emerging market countries and an emerging market economy is a developing nation that's becoming more engaged, more connected in terms of trade and tourism and capital investment with the major global markets. Here are four examples of emerging market countries, Mexico, Indonesia, Turkey and Bangladesh. Now, they're at different stages of development, but they're all categorised and classified as emerging countries. And one of the things we might suggest you do uh, this summer is to maybe choose one or two countries that particularly interest you, an emerging or developing country, and then go away and find out about their main economic strengths and challenges at the present time. A lot of my students are particularly interested in countries like Vietnam and Bangladesh and Indonesia, which could well become some of the powerhouse countries in the world in decades to come. The share of global GDP, just taking another look here at two things on the right hand side. ASEAN 5 is an economic community. Um, these are the top five ASEAN countries, Association of Southeast Asian Nations. And ASEAN 5 comprises Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, Indonesia and the Philippines. Five particularly interesting countries there. And they account for nearly 6% of the world economy. But notice on the right hand side, if we think about the whole of sub-Saharan Africa, all the many countries in that part of the continent, but yet only 3%, only 3% of the world's output of goods and services comes from sub-Saharan Africa. Here's another question for you. Which were the fastest growing countries in 2019? I've got a list, which I'll show in a chart. Uh, however, you only get one chance this time. You've got to write down a country that you think was growing very quickly in 2019. Let's see if your country uh, matches the data. Well, here are the countries that are growing most quickly. Uh, top of the tree was Rwanda with growth of just under 8%. Bangladesh was right up there. Ivory Coast, Ghana, Ethiopia, Nepal, Cambodia, Vietnam and Mongolia. All of these countries actually were growing up more than 6% per year. And there is interestingly something called the 7% Club if you can grow by 7% per year, then your national output will probably double every 10 years or so. So be becoming part of the 7% club is a badge of honour for many fast-growing countries. However, we know uh, that 2020 will be a particularly difficult, in many cases, traumatic year for the world economy. How bad will it be? Well, lots of people making forecasts. Here is the IMF, the International Monetary Fund's latest World Economic Outlook, published in April 2020. And they're saying that as a result of the pandemic, the global economy, the world economy, is projected to contract by 3% in 2020. World GDP will fall by 3%. Um, that's much worse than during the 2008 2009 financial crisis. Developed countries will suffer a 6% drop in output on average. Even emerging market fast-growing developing countries will see their output shrink in 2020. And per capita incomes, which we've looked at in this video, in this video national income or output per head of population. Per capita income, can you see on the right-hand side there, is forecast to fall by more than 4% in 2020. And the biggest drop in per capita incomes for more than 30 years. So these are dangerous times for the world economy. And of course, we'll be returning to the impact of the global pandemic at different stages of our summer Head Start course. OK, that's the end of the third video in our opening lesson. Uh, be sure to check out the activities and links for further research.